Hey, thanks for stopping by. Gonna do a quick video on how to set up the pie burn grip in the Roco twister tray. And we're gonna be doing a 40 ounce JDS fixed handled tumbler today. Um, first thing we're gonna do is make sure that our rotary is not plugged in. We're gonna go ahead, this bolt right here on the grip is the center of the axis. So that's where you wanna start. And then you notice that I've got a tumbler um, that's got a vertical line on it. You see the reflection there. What I want to do to verify that my rotary or the grip is parallel with the grant gantry, I want to make sure that this red light is going to follow that um, line on this tumbler. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and run it down. I'm going to line this up. And I'm just going to run this back and forth to make sure that that red light stays right on that horizontal line and it does if for some reason it was off all you'd have to do is loosen up one of these pull downs and slightly adjust your uh, grip main rail one way or the other until it follows this main line that's the quickest way you can get your um, rotary aligned with your gantry the other thing is there's a set of holes over here that you can always drive it over and make sure that it's uh, centered over the two holes that are in between these two rollers. But in all honesty, this uh, horizontal line that's put on this cup um, is very reliable. And so now we know that we've got the, uh, the rotary main rail, the backbone of the axis uh, is in line with the gantry. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put in this 40 ounce JDS um, tumbler with the fixed handle and get it set up. Lots of different ways uh, that you can mark your tumbler with the handle. The way I like to do it is I like to mark the opposite side of the middle of the, of the handle. And so I start the tumbler with the handle straight down. And the only way you can tell when the handle is completely straight down is to just make yourself a little jig um, and then mark your tumbler right here and that's where you're gonna uh, line up your red light. And uh, this way it's really uh, reliable and it's easy to do. The only thing you'll have to do is make yourself a little jig based on the, uh, on the size of tumbler. This actual jig is for a 20 ounce Arctic with a handle, but this works, this works well enough. You just line up the uh, middle of the handle and then mark your tumbler right here and that's what you're gonna line the red light up to in your laser. So quick and easy way to uh, mark your tumblers on the opposite side of where your uh, middle of your handle is. Okay, I've got uh, the rotary is still not plugged in and that way I can freely move this rotary just to make sure I don't have any conflicts with this handle. And you can say with the uh, Roco twister tray with this hole in the bottom, that big handle swings below the the bottom and it clears this main rail here. So it looks like we're gonna have plenty of room. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive the laser head to the left. And what I wanna do is I wanna line up the mark that I put on the tumbler. You can see it right here. I put a mark on the tumbler and I'm gonna go ahead and just line that up with the red light. Um, and I know that I'm in pretty good shape. The next thing I'm going to do before I plug this rotary in is I'm going to autofocus this tumbler. I've already uh, leveled it, just so you know. I'll show you that it's currently leveled. So we're good there. And so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to make sure that everything's out of the way, all my cords are out of the way, and I'm going to go ahead and autofocus. It's going to move over and come up and autofocus. And it's going to go back down, move over. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the manual controls and drop the Z one millimeter. Um, so I'm slightly defocused. And at this point, I can go ahead and set my origin. So I'm going to come over here to the uh, right between where the Stainless and the powder coat starts. I'm going to set my origin. My origin is set now. And we can go ahead and plug this in. OK. 
Okay, more than likely your grip had moved. You saw that it rocked in and kind of locked in. And so now my mark is about a millimeter, a millimeter at a time. It looks like it was off two millimeters. And now we can see that our red light is right lined up with our pencil mark. And at that point, I'm ready to go ahead and engrave this. So next we're all, uh, I'll go to Lightburn, we'll lay this out right quick. This is a simple, easy logo and uh, we'll be ready to go. Okay, how you access the manual mode, you touch the manual button here and you go to this little lock, push that. And I've got this set to one millimeter increments. And if I wanna defocus my lens, cause remember we just focused the tumbler. I'm gonna push this down once. It's gonna drop that Z one millimeter and now I am uh, one millimeter out of focus. And uh, we're good to go in that respect. And then I can go back home. If you need to uh, slowly rotate your tumbler around to the mark that you put on it um, without manually doing it, you can certainly do that. Just go back in your manual mode, make sure you turn unlock it. And now these will move one millimeter at a time. So you can rotate your tumbler one way or the other by one millimeter um, to go ahead and put that red light on that mark. If you haven't messed with this manual function uh, on the bolt, uh, please do so. This is a really handy function. You've got the uh, rabbit and the, uh, the tortoise speeds up here, and uh, there's lots of functionality in this little thing. So now we're ready to go. The first thing we're going to do is make a uh, vertical rectangle as our template. Um, the diameter of this uh, tumbler is 3.95 inches. So if I go to set up my rotary right here, it's uh, I did plug it in so it's connected. And I'm going to keep my steps the same. I'm going to put in 3.95 for my object diameter. Remember, I'm in chuck setting, not roller setting, but using the chuck because it's a uh, Pyburn grip putting in 3.95 for the object diameter, which calculates to 12.40. Um, you can see that we're connected to the, uh, to, the, to the grip. And so I'm gonna make a rectangle that's 12.40 tall by five inches wide. That's the engraving area of that particular tumbler is just the top part's gonna be five inches wide. So I'm gonna say, okay, I generate a rectangle it's my frame layer, which is black, and it's going to be, um, so we got 12.40 for our height and five inches wide. That's um, what my rectangle is. And then I'm going to add some alignment guides, some tool layers. So I'm going to flip those on. Um, here are my, uh, so what I did is I generated uh, two rectangles that are half the size of my black, black rectangle. One here, one here, that basically uh, splits my tumbler up into two pieces. I also put a, uh, a kind of a guide right here. This is an inch and a half by the, the width, which is five. And I center that on that, that back on the top line. And that just gives me a little bit of a buffer because I don't want my graphic to get too close to this handle, especially with the grip with your uh, autofocus plunger and that kind of stuff sticking out the back. You gotta be careful. And at this point, I'll go ahead and turn on my graphic. Again, it's just a simple uh, graphic. Um, this is centered into this tool layer and I'm ready to go. Now this assumes that, and this is something that you should always ask your customer. Um, do they want the logo facing outward when the person has the tumbler in their left hand or in their right hand? And in this particular case, the customer wants the logo to be facing out when the tumbler is in their right hand. And so it would be uh, on this top one and not in this bottom one. And uh, this is ready to go. My settings for the bolt for doing tumblers, I'm running 600 millimeters a second, 80% power. I'm running just under 400 uh, lines per inch, and that seems to be working out really well. So those are the settings for the bolt that I use on my tumblers. And at this point, you can see I've got my blue, which is engraved for me. Um, black is just a frame layer. I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off. 
And at this point, we are going to go ahead and select it. Make sure that that's the only thing that's going to be uh, engraved. It's going to take about two minutes, just over two minutes to engrave this tumbler. And if we go ahead and send it, go ahead and send it, and it just sent it, you heard it beep. And so it is now sent over to the laser. Okay, one final check. I've got my red light that's at the mark uh, that I did earlier. It's on my origin point between the stainless and the powder coat. Uh, I've sent over the file. I'm gonna frame it right quick. Let's see if I can move this up just a little bit. I'm gonna do a quick frame. Okay. Let's do that again, just so a little better camera angle here. I'm going to frame it. One tip I'll give you, if you have never done any cups with handles before and you're a little nervous about your layout, you're not just sure if you've done it right, here's a real easy way to keep yourself out of trouble. Just pull your laser head to the far left where you know if something was wrong and you didn't lay this out right that that handle would be able to come all the way over the top and not smack anything just pull your laser head over here somewhere doesn't really matter where and reset your origin so i just pushed the origin button and at this point i can go ahead and frame it and if anything would happen um, we wouldn't have a contact with this laser head over here. So what I would recommend you do if you haven't done any tumblers with handles is the very first time you get this all set up, just pull your laser head over here, hit the origin button, hit the frame button, and you can tell if things are set up right because this handle shouldn't ever come over the top. And uh, it's just a, a quick, easy way to make sure that you're not gonna have any contact when it comes to setting up cups with handles. And so then what I would do if you're confident with um, how that acted, then I would just pull your laser head back over, line it up with the uh, where it would be in between. And if I would need to go to my manual mode, I could do that and just do it a little bit at a time. Reestablish your origin and away you go. So that's a quick way you can go ahead and verify that your setup is correct without the risk of any damage. And I would highly recommend you do that. In a lot of cases, to be honest with you, I do that even today just to make sure um, I'm not going to have a contact with that handle and the laser head. That's not something you want to do. So I just use it as a precautionary, pull the laser header over to the, your left, uh, frame it, make sure that your setup's correct. If that all looks good, then pull this back over, reestablish your origin, and away you go. Okay, I think we're ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and hit go. And mine has about a 12-second delay uh, that I built in Lightburn, so the fan has a little time to ramp up before it gets started. So that's why you see this pause. You can hear the fan starting to ramp up. Now, with these particular settings, I'm using the inch and a half lens. With these particular settings, you can see that I'm going to have very little cleanup to do when I pull this tumbler off of the bolt. You can see how nice that uh, the fans work and it's pulling that smoke right to the back of the laser.
I'm going to give you another quick tip that was really handy on this bolt. So I'm uh, my origin is set where it's exactly supposed to, right here between the stainless and the powder coat. Okay, I want to remember that setting because I've got to align this line back up. And so um, since there's not a go to origin button on the controller, I'm going to make one. So what you're going to do is right now I am at my origin point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my origin coordinates right here. And they are listed right up here. So you notice that my X is at uh, 364.9. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go X and I'm going to go 364.9. I'm going to say OK. And then my Y is 105 even. 105.0. OK. OK. So anytime, watch what happens. If I pull my laser head back like it was, uh, like I pull it back when I want to change the cup, as soon as I put a new tumbler in the grip, what I'll do is I'll come down here, hit this little cross, and it brings that right back to where I need it to. So now I can use these arrows to dial in where my mark is. Um, so it's perfectly lined up. So you can see, watch what happens. See how I'm just barely moving that and I'm using that. There we go. And so um, that's what this little feature right here does. If you put in the coordinates on where you want it to remember, when you push that X button, it will bring your laser head to that. This works really good if like you were doing Yeti tumblers and you needed to uh, line up the Ye the middle of the Le Yeti logo or Arctic, any branded tumbler for that matter. Um, this feature works great. So it's just one more way. This is not your origin. This is just a secondary uh, coordinates to where if you push this plus button, it'll drive the laser head to that location. So now that I've uh, driven it back to the origin, I've adjusted my tumbler to make sure that my red light is where my mark is. Now it's just a matter of coming back to my file. I'm going to hold my finger on this. It's going to load it. And at this point, I should be able to go ahead and hit the start button. And after 12 seconds, it'll take off. Well, as you can see, it was a pretty easy process. Just follow your, the guidelines, follow the steps, make sure you don't plug that uh, rotary in before you focus your tumbler. And before you know it, you'll be able to create some really nice stuff with this bolt, the Roco twister tray and the pie burn grip. Sure appreciate you hanging out. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I'd sure appreciate it. Until next time, thanks and have a great day.